Well, hi everybody. So today I'll be going over DC Designs Harrier. We'll have a look at it. Kind of start it up, take it off, flat around for a second, land it, and then uh, do a short review on it. That'll pretty much be it for today. So let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty. Well, here we are in the Harrier. Now, as far as DC Designs goes, I'm going to say, in my opinion, this is the best looking cockpit I have ever seen them make. The model and texture quality are fairly good in here. They're not the best looking thing on the on the planet, but it certainly is an improvement over some of the other things that I have from them. Now, there may be a few things around here left to be desired in, in sort of visual quality and everything like that. Most of those end up just being a few switches and stuff, but overall, everything is relatively smooth and the textures aren't too terrible. So, again, it's not the best looking thing I've ever seen, but it's certainly an improvement for DC Designs. So we'll run through the features here. There are really only three of them. They're located over here on the right side of your cockpit, so we have the ability to turn the chocks on and off. This does not work for me. don't know why, but it, I, at least at the time of recording this, they don't appear. Uh, the same thing goes for crew visibility. I cannot turn the pilot on or off, at, again, at least at the time of recording this. As far as the covers go, the intake covers do work, so you can turn those on, and they will appear here. They don't look um, all that great, but oh well. So hopefully these will get fixed here soon, and you'll actually be able to use those things. Although, then again, it could just be me. Who knows? Either way, we're going to go ahead and get this thing started and take it off. Alrighty, we'll get this thing started. I'm not going to do this in any particular order. We're just going to kind of start over here on the left side of the cockpit and work our way to the right. So we'll go ahead and turn the fuel proportioner switch on. We'll turn the fuel pumps on. We'll go over here to the right side of the cockpit, turn the battery on, generator on, APU generator on, and we'll go ahead and flip the starter switch on. Go ahead and close the canopy. This thing is quite loud. I did have to turn the volume down quite a bit here. We're pretty much waiting for about 610 on our RPM, so while that kind of spools up and everything like that, we're going to go through a thing here, which is this is not intended to be a study level aircraft, so don't expect all the systems to work. If we go into the the multifunction display over here, you're going to run into a bunch of things that either say something like inoperable or not implemented, something like that. But other than that, you know, it's still pretty fun to fly. Alrighty. There's a couple of things to go over real quick before we take off here. One is, if you are taxing this thing, it does have a tendency to want to tip over, so be careful with that. The other thing is, if this thing is above 21,000 pounds, you will not be able to take it off vertically. So, I have to take it off the normal way. It's relatively easy to take off normally and land normally, but it's a little bit more fun to do the vertical takeoff and landing. Now, if you want to add in the weapons, you're just going to need to add in the weight here to the weight menu, and it'll put the weapons out on the wing. So, we're going to talk about the nozzle rotation handle here real quick and the nozzle limiter handle here before we take off. Uh, the nozzle rotation handle is controlled by propeller pitch, so whatever your propeller pitch is is what's going to move this. And the nozzle limiter handle here is going to need to be adjusted. We want to adjust it up here to about 92 degrees so that we don't go past 90 degrees. If we set this all the way back to 96, when you start to lift off, you tend to go backwards a little bit. So we want to limit that to 90 degrees. For whatever reason, they don't line up. This one's 92 and the limit is 90. I'm not sure why that is, but it is how that, that kind of works here. So we're pretty much good to take off now. And all we really need to do is put the flaps in the stall. We'll go ahead and begin throttling up. Now, somewhere around probably about 90% throttle, around about 1,000 RPM, probably going to lift off the ground. Go ahead and put the gear up. We're going to begin moving, moving the nozzles up here to about 45 degrees, so we can get a little bit forward movement here. Now that is the sort of third notch on that, or the second white line. We are moving forward now. And once we get to about 150 knots here, we we'll want to go ahead and move those all the way forward. Wrong way. And put the flaps back into auto. And we're pretty much good to maneuver here. Now it 
there's not too much to say about this thing. It's a pretty fun plane to fly. It has an okay roll rate. It's not particularly fast, but it's not slow. And it, it turns an okay circle for a jet. Altitude. Altitude. And it actually climbs pretty well. Now, it's not particularly fast. This is, again, doesn't have an afterburner or anything like that, so you can probably break the sound barrier in it, maybe. But most of the time, you're going to be sitting around like, I don't know, 600 to mod knots, 650. Like, 0.99 is, is about the fastest I can get it in level flight. You might be able to do the sound barrier every once in a while as it gets lighter. The weight does tend to affect how this thing flies. So if you have a fully loaded plane, you're not going to be getting the top speed out of it, if will. It's much, much lighter, which makes sense. Also, it seems to be a little bit more sluggish on the controls when it's heavier. But other than that, there's not much to it. So we're just going to kind of bring it around here and land in this field right here. So we'll bring it down so that we're about 240 knots. We'll go ahead and put the flaps back into the stole. And then we'll rotate the nozzles here down to 90% or 90 degrees. We'll go ahead and throttle almost all the way back up so that we can not fall to the ground. Pull back on the stick just a little bit to kind of stop our forward momentum. and put the gear down. Now 993 on your RPM should be enough to get you to hover or at least around there. It's not like a hard number or anything like that but it will require almost full throttle to keep this thing from hitting the ground too hard. Right now I guess we're doing we're about about a thousand RPM. Well, it wasn't great, but we're on the ground. It doesn't seem like we broke anything. So, that's pretty much it here for the Harrier. We're going to go ahead and run into the review real quick, and that'll pretty much be it for the day. Alrighty, the Harrier is about $34. You can pick it up from JustFly.com. You do get three Harrier variants. However, there's not that much of a difference between them. You get a decent selection of liveries. Again, they are pretty similar to one another. My rule for DC Designs is that they do not make the best-looking planes, but they do a very good job of making fun-to-fly planes. They usually don't require any foreknowledge of the plane. You can pretty much just hop in the cockpit and in no time be tearing up the digital sky. As far as model and texture quality go, they're not great, but I do think this is the best looking DC Designs plane so far. The cockpit actually looks pretty good. The exterior looks okay, it's not great. You probably won't notice anything in the exterior view at the default camera distance. Zooming in is where you're going to notice things, but again I would like to reiterate I do think this is the best looking DC Designs plane so far. The sounds are really quite good, they are crisp and clear, and if I were to pick the best sound effect, I would say it's the engine sounds. They are incredibly loud. This may be the loudest plane I have ever heard in Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is not a complaint. The switches sound good. For the most part, everything sounds good. There are two missing sound effects, which are the flaps and the landing gear. Either way, it does sound quite a bit like a Harrier, especially when you back a good distance away from the plane. As systems complexity goes, there really isn't much here. It's not meant to be a study level plane, so don't expect everything to work. There are just enough things to make you think you're doing something, but for the most part you flip a few switches and you're pretty much good to go. There isn't any engine damage or anything like that to worry about. It's fairly simplistic, but rather fun to fly. Which brings us to the flight model. I am not very familiar with the flight characteristics of the Harrier. Again, like all of my reviews, I have never flown one of these. So all I'll say is that I've had fun flying it around, it's easy to pick up, landing might be a slightly different story. There is a note in the manual that I'm going to quote, some of the Harrier's more insidious traits, such as the tendency to flip onto its back and crash when attempting to hover in certain conditions, have not been included. So that's not here. 
the only other VTOL aircraft that I have for Microsoft Flight Simulator is the Pelican from Halo. I will say that the Harrier is better. Though it might not be a good comparison because the Pelican is a little bit more like a helicopter and it's fictitious. The Harrier is not without its problems, so I'll run through a few of those, two of which I've already mentioned, those being that the chocks don't work and the ability to hide or show the pilot is not functional. The heading hold sometimes tries to bank the plane for no reason. I did a couple of tests with the autopilot. It's not something that happened often. When it did, I flipped heading hold off, leveled the plane out, and flipped heading hold back on, and it didn't seem to happen again. So who knows, it might just be something that only happens to me. The heat effect from the exhaust only seems to come out from the left side of the plane, and there may be a few other problems, but those are the ones that I noticed. That's pretty much it. I will reiterate, this is not intended to be a study level aircraft, it's just meant to be something that's easy to pick up and fun to fly around. It's not the best looking plane in the game, it sounds pretty good, and it's not complicated. I will say it's going to be as realistic as you want to make it, and I have by no means mastered landing this thing. That's why I landed it in a field. I did attempt to land it on an oil rig, and then discovered that oil rigs are not solid objects in this game. So that's pretty much going to be it for today, guys, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.